Hi, this is Greg Study, Study on Soccer, and I am here with Jacques Ladisseur. Jacques, it is so good to meet it's with you. It's a pleasure, man. To see you. And uh, we're going to talk about respect. And this is all centered around raising a professional athlete. So, Jacques, where does, where does respect really start? Ha! That's an easy one. Respect starts in the home. Um, of course. Of course. Talk about how that plays out, some of the specifics of how you see the raising of a child uh, just on it on its face, but then also in the context of an athlete. Well, having, you know, my mom basically taught me respect to my home mm -hmm. when I was growing up and having worked with hundreds, probably thousands of children by now. And I kind of get a, based on my experience, I see that for a professional, for a person to really become a professional athlete eventually in their, in their career, one of the biggest things they got to have is the respect factor. They've got to learn to respect people and it starts right in the home. Give me some examples. Very basic example. Children love to, um, not per se interrupt, but they, they get excited about certain things, about talking to their parents. And one of the ways you can teach your children to, to tone it down a little bit and show respect is that they can touch your arm uh -huh. and let you know that they want to tell you something you when go. you're in a conversation. And then when that conversation breaks up, then you can stop and focus 100% of your attention to your children. Right. It teaches them that when you're talking to them, you're giving them everything you've got. Interesting. So in order to deviate, if, if I'm talking to somebody and they're talking to me, it's like I'm not giving them all of me. So. That's right. That's right. So uh, how does that then translate into guests coming into the home? The other thing is uh, what we see today is that there's a lot of times when people come to your house, your children, they just run to their rooms. Oh, right. And children really needs to, they, they, they need to have conversation with adults. It, help them, it helps them to mature. One of the ways you teach your children how to respect the adults is to come out and meet the adults. That's great. Shake their hands, look at them in the eye. That's great. And build that and ask them for their name and understanding and learning their names because that's important. And then they should, they, you should teach them how to serve people as well. Wow. Ask them, you know, they can ask, you, they can ask the adults, you know, hey, would you like something to drink? Great. Once they're done with that, they can excuse themselves. Right. And that shows respect for you, respect for the adults. And that's what the beginning of teaching children how to respect people. When you mentioned names, names are so important. Oh, names are is incredible because once your children know and understand that learning people's names is important, and if the name is too difficult, ask the person to spell their name for That's you. great. I and love then it. later on, you can practice with them. You can write sure. their name down. And that all helps them to build better relationships. And of course, people love to hear their names. People, that's the sweetest sound in the world. That's right. what Dale Carnegie said. The sweetest sound in the world is a person's name. Right. And the other thing that this translates to in this conversation is um, their interaction with the outside world. Once they get out into the outside world, if they've taken the time to address the guests, in their home, right. they're gonna be more comfortable right. with a good and respectful introduction and interaction right. with, the, with the general public. Right. Wow, that's, that's huge. It what, is. Uh, when I coach my kids, I teach them how to look at each other in the eye, shake people's hands, and also say their names and get the other person's names to understand. Knowing somebody's name on the field is important, right? If you're playing soccer, yeah, you yeah. have to know, it's good to know their names. Yeah. If, when you call a person's name, they're more apt to pass you the ball. And on the outside, that's the way it is. Yeah. Outside the home, everybody expect your children to respect them, right. period. Right. Every person they right. come across, right. everywhere they go. So if they don't get that respect in the home, now they have to go outside where people have a certain expectation of them, which they don't know how to do. So let's talk a little bit about what I think you call outsourcing uh, in, in terms of parenting at a young age. Well, there's a lot of people who are outsourcing parents. I mean, typically it, it starts with probably babysitting, um, uh, uh, daycare, those kind of things. Gotcha. That's outsourcing your parent. Now, people have to work and they have to do what they have to do, but right. that's the reality of it. And then you have electronic toys. You have things like, you know, computers, wow. yeah. phones, and everything like that. When they're watching the phone, you can't train them. A parent mm. is not, it, it, a parent is a title, but what you really are is a trainer. A trainer. And in order to train somebody, you have to have conversations with them. You have to look at them in the eye. You have to be able to talk to them. And that's what a trainer does. Wow. How does this then translate to now they're, they're still in the home. I mean, they're still a kid in the home, but now they've decided to pursue athletics. So now they're do, there's a whole new social dynamic that's taking place. It's different than the classroom. Yes. It's different than the playground. Yes. It's a whole new different dynamic. And there's a new authority in their life now. Right. Well, talk a little bit about that. Well, the respect is, 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 so, is so important. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. 
um, uh, I coach a group of kids and, and one of the kids came to try out for my team. He wanted to be on my team. And one of the things that happened was that after the, after the practice was over, I asked all the, all the kids to take off their jerseys, their little jerseys that we put on top of them so they can distinguish them as teams. Right. To put it in a bag. Okay. This young, this, this boy came and he threw the jersey in my face. <laughs> now, clearly, what, what I noticed right away is that he has a problem with respect. Sure. So what I said to him, I said to him, don't come back. It didn't really matter how talented he was. Right. But he didn't respect me as a coach. And all the players were standing there watching that. Yeah, and if you let that go, who knows how that takes off on the attitude of other of the well, other players. Yeah, that's not teaching the other players respect. Though. That's right. But by the way you did handle it, that not only sent a message to the kid you were talking to, Correct. but also to the entire team. Exactly. Right. And the other thing is, and, and hopefully that helps him. Because of the course. next the next time he goes try out for a team, he's probably not gonna do that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> so hopefully that helps him. So as the kids get older, the players get older, and, and, and we're going into, uh, into youth clubs, uh, professional or semi-professional teams, professional teams, maybe even as far as a national team. How does, how does the respect on the field progress with the interaction with these growing egos um, these other players now, I mean, they're great. They're all, now everybody's a good player. Right. As you get better and right. better and better. Right. Um, how, how does this idea of respect grow with that progression? Well, it grows a little bit, but the funny thing I found out is that it doesn't change. That's interesting. You know, it's like trying to change the color of the sky. That's not going to happen. Gotcha. The same respect my mother taught me in my home is the same respect I used all over the world. In every country of the world I've been to, with all the people in the world I've been to. So that hasn't changed. When I played in a different country, they were brought up in a different culture. They spoke a different language, but the same respect that I learned is the same respect that I gave to them. So when, you, when, when we're kids at home, we learn to play games. We learn to play games, yard games, uh, out on the playground, board games. These games have rules. Right. Um, when now the, these kids are playing out on a field where the game has rules. And of course, the referee is the guy who's overseeing those rules. Right. But it's but it's the obligation of the player to play within those rules. And clearly, right. they know the rules before they take the field. Talk about how that this this idea of respect relates to the rules of the game. Well, respecting the game is very important. Right. Mm. Every game has a rule. In order to perform better, you, you do need to respect it, or else you're going to be focusing on other things, not really what you're trying to do. The referee is, is uh, he demands respect. Right. Because he's in charge of the game. Now, if you don't respect him, what's going to happen is that he has the choice to throw you out of the game. Is it ever, is it ever appropriate to challenge the call of the referee, obviously on the field where you're in his face? And is that ever appropriate? Well, I mean, no. You you, you can challenge calls, but you have to be very very careful how you challenge call. Okay. Because the referee has an ego too. Right. And every referee has a different personality and, and so on and so on. So it, it all changes, but the reality is you just have to be very careful of challenging calls. He's it's, not going to... It's best not to challenge him. He's not going to reverse the call. No, he's not. And the only thing he might do that's different is ex make it worse. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and then you're, as, a, a, as an athlete, as you're working on performance on that field, that mm, time, mm -hmm. uh, you got to be careful of challenging calls because sometimes it can throw you off. Your mindset could be completely gone. Interesting. And if your focus is gone off the game, then you're off somewhere else. You cannot reach your highest level of performance. So let's go back to the to the youth programs. As a as a coach, you deal with the parents. Correct. Um, and now you're dealing with the result of their training. Correct. The result of their training. That's right. Okay. On the field, but you're also having to deal with them in the stands, and sometimes maybe face to face. Right. Um, and I'm sure that you've experienced the best. Yes. And the worst. Yes. Uh, talk to talk to me a little bit about how that plays out with what you get as a result from because we're talking about raising the athlete. How does that bad behavior from from the parents translate into the child? It manifests into the child. Well, you know, that's we have to take responsibility of who we train. Yeah. As a coach, I'm the same way. I train the players. Absolutely. Right. I have to take responsibility of that, and a parent has to take responsibility of who they train. And you can always see it. The behavior of the parents out there uh, is, is, is in their children as well. Interesting. It's, it's there. I mean, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go away. Uh, it's always going to be there unless something changes. And if that parent doesn't decide to change, 
And when they start acting up, they affect every person, every person, every child on the field right. gets affected, not just the one on our team. Right, right. So how, then that same idea of respect within the team, how does that play out against the opposition? Well, the, the opposition, again, when, you, when, you, when you're playing, you have to respect everybody. You have to respect your opponents. Uh, basically the people you're playing against. It doesn't mean you do something crazy, you disrespect them. If you disrespect them, they're gonna show you disrespect. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had, I've played games many times. After the game, I've had other people from other teams says, man, I really appreciate playing against you mm. because uh, I see the way you act, the way you train, you didn't, you didn't disrespect anybody. Mm. And the referees would say the same thing. So over a course of a period of time, I noticed that that works. That's the best way to do things. Gotcha. When, when, you when you've got the superstar, now everybody on the field at the higher levels is, has an ego. Right. Everybody, the referee, the coach, all the players. Right. Um, but then there's that superstar who gets special treatment, who doesn't have to come to practice. Um, and then also there's that dirty player who mm -hmm. regularly tackles, you, you know, with, yeah. his, with cleats up, yep. you yep. know, things like that. How do those personalities affect the overall respect within the team unit? Well, it affects it a lot. Are you talking about the same superstar that, that got passed through high school because he was a superstar? That's right. Or maybe that got passed through college because he was a superstar? Yeah, that's right. Well, you that know, guy. Those, those people usually, they get a rude awakening at some point. Interesting. But I, but I can tell you this, as a player on a team, it doesn't matter. Everybody recognizes that that superstar is getting that. And every, it, it's a ticking time bomb. Everybody understands that that's wrong. Right. Everybody knows it's wrong. The coach knows it's wrong. Um, the players know it's wrong. They deal with it for a while, but at some point, there's gonna be an explosion on somebody. It's gonna come out. Right. And it affects every single person on the team, so. But ultimately, we gotta take this right back to the home again, huh? Exactly, Talk exactly. You cannot, if, if you allow your children to get away with things and being disrespectful, and then they become these big stars and other people allow them to do that, they're just passing them on eventually they're going to hit rock bottom. I had a, I just had a visual of, of uh, playing a game of Monopoly and the kid just, you know, the other kid just got boardwalk and park place and then the, the other kid across the way just picks up the board and throws it across the field, throws it across the room. Or a chess game where you got just got checkmate yeah. and the kid just takes the board and just throws it. Yeah. And that kind of attitude is going to continue on it will. As a professional athlete on the on the actual pitch. It will, and then it will, affect, it will affect their performance because at some point that's what they're focused on. They're not really focusing on the team, on the, on the goals of the team, uh, how the team performs and, and right. how we want to win right. uh, together as a team. Uh, they lose the focus on the match, they lose the focus on the game, they lose the focus on the season, and uh, it, it just affects the team very negatively. So I want to touch a little bit about your personal history. You played on a San Diego Soccer's team that was loaded with skill, loaded with egos, and international differences, language right. differences, right. that whole thing. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? At that level of performance, how does that respect come in when the game is, is underway? You know, it never changes. Mm. It never changes. Again. Um, all, all the players, I, I found out what works best is when I respect the players the way I talk to them, especially mm -hmm. on the field, mm -hmm. the way I encourage them, the way, the, the way when they make mistakes, I lift them up. Interesting. Because we don't have time. Right. We don't have time to bring people down. We don't have time. When you disrespect somebody, you're bringing them down. That's true. And we want, uh, I want to win the game. I don't care about that one moment that we, I'm not going to bring my guy down that one moment right. and then have him go down the whole game. Because right. I need him. I need him in the crunch moment and the critical moments. So it works the same way. It doesn't change. It, you may use different words. Your body language is key. Yep, there you go. Because when someone makes a mistake, they know they made the mistake. They're looking at their players. They're saying, okay, how are these guys going to react to me? That's right. Are they still going to give me some love? That's right. Or are they gonna, just going to squash me down? That's right. And that's the thing you got to watch for because you diminish the performance of the players if you disrespect them. And it all starts at the home. You know, everything starts right at home. So the ultimate trainer is mom and dad. That's right. Awesome. Zach Ladisur, thanks for talking to me today. Oh, you're welcome, man. All Good right. to see you. It's been all great right. sharing with you today. This has been a passion of mine for such a long time. You can contact me in the email below and also purchase the books in the links below.